Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering the professional nurse. This is a video for the brand new nursing students, so I'm going to get you started on the right foot. Now, before we get started, a couple things I'm going to ask you to do is to please help support this channel. Go ahead, press that like button now. You know you're going to love this video. Press the like button now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Now, before I get started on the video, I want to start off with a prayer. If you're not into that, just fast forward. You're good. If you are, please close your eyes and bow your head. Unless you're driving, keep your eyes open. If you're doing anything, operating heavy machinery, anything that requires concentration, keep your eyes open, okay? Otherwise, close your eyes. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father God, for the healing and restoration that you brought to my body, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, thank you for every single viewer that's watching this video right now, Father God. They've come to my channel for a specific purpose and i ask that you please help them help them to understand the material help them to understand the content this print these principles father god and help them to be able to apply them when they see them and be able to answer these nursing questions correctly and appropriately father god i pray for these brand new nursing students lord i ask that you please help them to be focused i ask that you please help them with time management i ask that you please help them to understand the material that's being taught in school and to give them the discipline when they get out of school to go home and study, to read, to take notes, help them to develop um, healthy studying habits and patterns, Father God. I ask that you help them to link up with other like-minded students that want to learn, that want to understand, help them to have good study groups, people that they can depend on in the nursing program so that they don't have to go at it alone. Lord, I ask that you not only bless the viewer, but I ask that you bless the support system, the people who are rooting them on and telling them that they can get through it, that they can do it. Lord, I ask that you pour a special blessing over them as well. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that you've given me to get on here every week and to provide teaching and to do it in a way that the students can understand. Lord, please never let me forget that it's you and not me. And Lord, I pray that you allow yourself to shine through me and help me to recognize opportunities, Lord, if someone's struggling for me to help them, Father God. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for all you'll continue to do for us in Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. First question. You're preparing a presentation for your nursing course on the topic of professional standards of care. Which statements best describe professional standards of care? Select all that apply. Okay, if you're new to my channel, you won't know this, but I'm going to teach this to you right now. When it comes to select all that apply, the trick is to treat it as a true or false. Don't ever try to clump your answers together for it to make sense. It has to be able to stand individually by itself. If that choice is true, you're going to hold on to it. And if it's false, you're not going to choose it. So we're talking about professional standards of care. So let's go through each one. One, describe a competent level of behavior in the professional role. Absolutely true it helps you helps to judge or to decide the quality of care right there has to be a standard absolutely true how about two protect the patient's confidentiality false let me tell you something this is a famous thing that um this is a common thing that test writers will do they'll put a beautiful answer choice but if it's not answering your question, it's still wrong because you always want to protect your patient's confidentiality, right? Of course you do. But go back to the question. What are they asking you about? The professional standards of care. So even though number two, um, protecting a patient's confidentiality, this is an important nursing intervention. That's absolutely something that you want to do. But what they're asking us about specifically is the professional standard of care. So that's false. How about three, based on scientific research? Yes, the professional standard of care is based on scientific research and the work of um, clinical experts. Absolutely true. How about four, provides the foundation for decision making for nurses? Yeah. That's how the nurse actually decides um, what their um, intervention or what they're actually going to do next. That decision making, that's what it's based on. Absolutely true. Five, define principles of right and wrong to provide patient care. False. That wording, right and wrong, that can be subjective, right? In nursing, we never 
put our opinions, our judgments onto nursing actions, okay? Right or wrong, we have ethical, we have legal, but what do they mean right or wrong? Absolutely not. So for this answer choice, guys, the correct answer is number one, number three, and number four, because all of those are statements that actually describe the standards of professional care, okay? Next question. The nurse is providing a patient and caregiver information about low sodium diet ordered by the healthcare provider. The nurse uses teach back to determine the patient's understanding of the diet. Which professional nursing role is demonstrated by the nurse? One, manager, two, educator, three, researcher, or four, caregiver. And the correct answer is two educator and so let me talk to you guys and obviously guys it's educator because it says that the patient that the nurse did teaching and now they're telling the patient to do teach back why do you think they're telling that patient to do teach back they want to assess how much the patients actually learn so let me tell you this guys whenever you're going to teach something to a patient the very first thing you want to do is assess their level so let's say you're going to teach them about insulin administration. The first thing you're going to do is ask an open-ended question. Hey, Mr. Such and Such, can you tell me what you know about insulin administration? Imagine you were going to start your teaching all the way down here and come to find out that your patient is retired, but when he, he or she was working in the professional capacity, they were an endocrinologist, right? Or they were a diabetes specialist. You never know. Or imagine you were going to start your teaching up here and then you come to realize, well, you know, this patient doesn't even know what insulin is. So the first thing you always want to do is assess their knowledge. How much do they know about what you're going to teach? So that's the first thing you're going to do. The second thing you're going to do is actually teach them the information. And the third thing you're going to do is assess. Assess their understanding and you do that by telling them, okay, now it's time for you to teach, teach me what I taught you. So you can see if they really understood the information or you can ask them for a return demonstration. Okay, what I taught you, I want you to show me, show it back to me. You always have to assess the patient's understanding. Okay, so number two is the correct answer and that's educator. Uh, the nurse anticipates in a team care the, the nurse participates in a team care conference for a patient. The nurse listens to the registered dietitian and the physical and occupational therapist detail the plan for the patient. The nurse then describes the concerns about walking, the patient's concerns about walking to the group. This is an example of which QSEN competency? One, patient-centered care. Two, safety. Three, teamwork and collaboration. Or four, evidence-based practice. And the correct answer, guys, is three, teamwork and collaboration. Guys, look at how many people are on this case. It says that the nurse listens. So this nurse is showing respect because they're listening to what they have to say before she, they, he or she opens their mouth to put their input. Look, we got, um, it's a team care conference. So that already lets us know that there are other disciplines on board. Physical therapists, occupational therapists, registered dietitian. All of them are getting together to talk about their plan for the patient and the nurse listens to what they have to say and then the nurse discusses his or her concerns or um, add their input. That is teamwork and collaboration. Now let's look at our other answer choices. We have um, one, patient-centered care. That's when the care revolves around that patient, around the patient's goals or around um, that patient's needs, but that patient is the center of that care that's being planned. Two, safety. Safety, that's avoiding harm, avoiding injury. Four, evidence-based practice. Guys, this is what guides um, your interventions, right? Evidence-based practice is research. That has been done to show us if we do this, we should expect this result. This is the best practice because this is the result that we'll get from this practice. That's your evidence-based practice. But for this question, uh, specifically, what we're dealing with is teamwork and collaboration. The nurse is preparing a presentation on the nursing profession and factors that are creating impact. Which are key factors impacting professional nursing today that should be included in the presentation? Select all that apply. Okay, guys, how do we treat select all that apply? As true or false? Let's go. One, increasing prevalence of workplace violence. 
true. Have you been watching the news lately? Absolutely. And that's going to impact professional nursing today. Okay. Two, increased need for knowledge on emergency preparation. And this is coming from someone living down in South Florida, right? We just had that hurricane. Absolutely. All types of emergencies. Absolutely. Three, rising rate of the medically underserved population. Yes, and those who are not medically covered, those numbers are increasing. Absolutely. How about, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Shift of population from urban setting to rural areas. False. The shift that we're seeing, guys, is actually the opposite. We're seeing more people who are in the rural areas moving to the urban areas. So that's false. How about uh, five? Increased number of nurses reaching retirement age. True. You guys know all about um, this nursing shortage. And of course, the pandemic hasn't helped. But even before that, it's been predicted that we're going to have this huge gap because of all the nurses that will be retiring, right? And because of this pandemic, it brought a lot of nurses out of retirement. But there's still that huge gap of um, qualified professional nurses that are needed. Absolutely. So the correct answer choice is number one, two, three, and five. A nurse has responsibility for the nursing budget, developing strategic programs, and oversees staffing for all clinical departments in the hospital. The nurse is practicing in which nursing role? One, nurse manager, two, nurse administrator, three, nurse educator, or four, nurse researcher. Okay, guys, and the correct answer is two, nurse administrator. Now, this is a nurse that manages the patient care, but they're managing this uh, patient care where? Behind the scenes, right? It's not like they're on the floor doing the clinical work, but they are managing this patient care. They're doing it behind the scenes. If you go back to the question, look at what it says. They're taking care of the nursing budget, the nursing strategic programs, the staffing for all clinical departments. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, nurse manager. Now the nurse manager also manages nursing care, but what? This is the one that you see, it's on site, on the floor, right? Three, nurse educator. This is the one that educates the staff. They teach the staff about um, new machines that are being used or new technology. This is the person that promotes staff de development. That's your nurse educator. And then last, nurse researcher. Remember when I was talking to you guys about evidence-based practice and I told you it's based on research that has proven to be effective? Well, nurse researcher, they're part of that research to figure out what is the best practice for various given scenarios, disorders, okay? But for this specific question, the correct answer is to our nurse administrator. Match the advanced practice nurse specialty with the statement about the role. So we have some choices. Let's, draw, let's start with A. Provides independent care, including gynecological and pregnancy services. What do you think? A, B, C, or D? And guys, the correct answer is A, the nurse midwife. And we have some clues. It said gynecological pregnancy, the nurse midwife. Let's look at B. Expert clinician in a specialized area of practice. What do you think the answer is? And the correct answer is one, clinical nurse specialist. And there was a clue in the question. It said uh, uh, expert clinical in a what? Specialized area of practice. Clinical nurse specialist. Next, look at C. Provides comprehensive care most often in primary care setting, directly managing the medical care of patients. What do you think is the correct answer? And the correct answer is C, the nurse practitioner. And last, look at D, provides care and services under the supervi supervision of an anesthesiologist. Anesthesi I hate this, you know I can't speak. You see the word, anesthesi anesthesi anesthesiologist. And the correct answer, guys, is D, nurse anesthetist. If you're new to my channel, you'll get you'll get used to it. I have a speech impediment. I've always had it, so um, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. Okay, let's keep going, guys. The nurse recognizes that which of the following provides the legal regulation for nursing practice? 
One, the code of ethics. Two, the standard of practice. Three, the clinical guideline. Or four, the Nurse Practice Act. And the correct answer is four, the Nurse Practice Act. This um, is established by the state and it regulates the nursing practice. It tells you what you are allowed to do. It tells you your what? Scope of nursing. You know those videos I do where I go over priority and delegation and I tell you what you can, what the RN can delegate to the LPN and the unlicensed assistive personnel and what the RN has to hold on to because they can't delegate that to, to anyone else? Well, they know what they can delegate and what they have to hold on to by this, the Nurse Practice Act. That's what tells the nurse what their um, scope of practice is. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. Number one, the code of ethics. That's the guide for um, carrying out uh, the nursing responsibilities. And examples of that would be, you know, things you learned in um, ethics, such as um, justice, um, beneficence, um, autonomy, those type of things, okay? That is your standard of practice. Now, number two, clinical guidelines. These are recommendations to optimize the patient care, right? And then, did I skip one? Oh, I skipped one. I'm sorry, guys. Choice number two, standard of practice. Well, we talked about standard of practice. I think that was the first question I went over. With the standard of practice, that's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's the bar. That's the bar for that is set for the competent nurse. Okay? So when you're thinking of that, I want you to think of the bar. The bar that is set as the competent nurse. So for this question, guys, the correct answer choice is the Nurse Practice Act. And again, it tells you what your scope of practice is. The nurse changes the dressing on the patient's abdominal wound. The nurse is acting in which professional role? One, educator, two, advocate, three, caregiver, or four, case manager. And the correct answer, guys, is three, caregiver. You're changing the patient's wound. You're helping them. You're caring for them. Caregiver, that's the role right? Let's look at the other choices. Again, you have the educator. I talked to you about that. You're teaching. Two, we haven't talked about advocate. So advocate, when you're acting as an advocate for your patient, you're standing up for them for their rights. So if your patient's not present, you're still standing up for their right. You're not overstepping your boundaries, right? But you are step standing up for their rights. So let's say the patient, you heard that patient say to you, I don't want any injections at all. And you're sitting in a team meeting and a healthcare provider has said, hey, you know, I've ordered this medication to be given to the patient. And being an advocate to say, hey, you know, this patient said that they're, they're deathly afraid of any punctures. Can that medication be given orally? And maybe it can't. But the point is, you said something for your patient. You're advocating for them. Um, Choice four, case manager. The case manager, guys, puts everything together and makes sure that's a smooth process from when that uh, time that patient's uh, discharged to going home or to going to a skilled nursing facility, getting home health care. They're making the case manager make sure that everybody's on board that needs to be on board to make sure that's a smooth transition and there's no gap in care, okay? The nurse develops a simulation on the heart failure and then evaluates other nurses on performance of competencies during the simulation. The nurse is acting in what professional role? One, educator. Two, nurse administrator. Three, nurse manager. Or four, caregiver. Now, I explained all of these already, so you should get this correct. Absolutely. Number one, educator. That's what they're doing. They're educating the staff. They're um, making sure that everybody on board is competent to use the machine or to be able to accurately assess their patient or whatever it is, but they're making sure that their staff is educated, okay? And this is what's known as staff development. Which behaviors performed by the nurse contribute to the development of professionalism? Select all that apply. Okay, how do you treat select all that apply? 
as true or false? Let's go. One, sending a thank you letter after a job interview, true or false? True, that is very professional. Two, following the agency dress code. True, you're not trying to show up to work in jeans, right? Of course, you wanna be professional. That is very professional. Three, posting comments about a patient on social media site. False. And not only is that unprofessional, that can get you fired and that could have you standing before your state board of nursing. Don't do it. How about four, responding to a text message during an interview? False. Not only is that unprofessional, that is so rude. And that is dumb. Why would you do that? All right, next question. Oh, sorry, uh, last choice. Five, taking pictures of a patient with a cell phone. You know that's unprofessional. You'll get fired and you'll be standing before your state board of nursing. So the correct answer, guys, is choice number one and choice number two. And we are down to our last question. This is a case study, so bear with me, guys. One of the concerns raised by the interdisciplinary team meetings regarding Mrs. Malone's discharge is access to resources. Mrs. Malone will stay with her daughter for a few weeks until she's strong enough to return to her primary residence. Mrs. Malone's physician has agreed to order home health physical therapy for safety evaluation and strengthening exercises. The physician would like to have Mrs. Malone seen by uh, physical therapy twice a week for three to four weeks if authorized by the insurance company. Discharge planning that values the preferences of Mrs. Malone and her daughter is an example of which of the following competencies? A, patient-centered care, B, teamwork and collaboration, C, evidence-based practice, or D, quality improvement. And guys, the correct answer is patient-centered care. Go back to the question. It said discharge planning that values the preferences of Mrs. Malone and her daughter. So we're working around the patient who is a centered, that patient-centered care, okay? Now let's look at the wrong answers. I talked to you about this already, teamwork and collaboration. That's when many disciplines come together to, um, to plan care of the patient and agree and collaborate together. See evidence-based practice again, clinical research and studies that show us what is the best practice to get the most effective outcome for our patient. And then D, I haven't spoken to you about D, quality improvement. Guys, um, the point of quality improvement is not um, punitive. It's not to get anyone in, tr in trouble. It's to make sure that our patients are safe and it's to make sure that we don't make the same mistake again. So when something happens, a patient has a fall or a mistake is made. When QI comes in, quality improvement is to figure out what went wrong and what can be instituted to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And the reason that it's not punitive, if it were punitive, if someone made a mistake, people wouldn't report it, right? And pe if people don't report it, we don't realize that there's a problem that needs to be fixed. So that is very important to know. It's not punitive, number one. Number two, QI is there so that... Um, Policies can be instituted can be instituted to make it a safer environment for the patient. And the third thing I want to tell you about this is QI stuff never goes into the patient's chart. You hear me? Never, ever. This goes in the separate binder. It has nothing to do with the patient's chart. You can't even document the existence of QI regarding that patient. That is something separate for the facility only. It's for internal use. It has nothing to do with the patient's chart. And you don't even mention its existence in the patient's chart. And guys, that is it for this vi video. This video was a little bit shorter than the others, but like I said, this video was for my brand new baby nursing students. So please let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or more, exp more extensively. Go ahead, put that in the comment section below. Don't forget, almost daily guys, I cover a variety of nursing topics and questions on my social media platform, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So be sure to check me out there. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website at nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and you guys to catch me on the next video.